Hey guys, today I'm going to be taking a look at the latest release of Arch Labs Linux. Arch Labs, for those that are not familiar with it, is an Arch-based Linux distribution that uses the Openbox Window Manager. Uh, this particular version of Arch Labs Linux was just released. It was released two days ago on February 26, 2018. Now I have reviewed a previous version of Arch Labs Linux on the channel. It was actually one of the very first Linux distributions I ever took a look at on this channel. Back in October of 2017, I reviewed Arch Labs, uh, Arch Labs Minimo. Uh, today, I'm going to be downloading Arch Labs 2018.02, and I'm going to install this inside a virtual machine. The ISO I, I downloaded was 919 megs in size, so pretty small ISO. And I'm just going to boot directly into the live environment here. All right, and the live environment has loaded. It looks like the VirtualBox guest editions are working out of the box. I have a full screen resolution, but it's kind of glitchy. You see that the uh, wallpaper, for example, is tiled still. It looks like it's still doing like an 800 by 600 resolution for the wallpaper, but they're being tiled to fill up my entire screen. Also, the panel at the top of the screen looks like it's only about a 800 or maybe a 1024 width. So it's great that the uh, guest editions are working here in VirtualBox, but it, you know, doesn't look that great. But I'm not really going to play around in the live environment anyway. I just want to run the installer. So I'm going to right click on the desktop. I'm going to see if I can find the installer somewhere in our open box menu here. Oh, right here. Install Arch Labs. All right. Select language. Okay. I'm going to go with English. Checking installer has been run as root. All checks passed. Okay. This is the Arch Labs installer. Well, this is interesting because this is not the Arch Labs installer that I remember from my previous review. In my previous review, I'm pretty sure Arch Labs was using the Calamares installer. Uh, why you would go away from the Calamares installer to some kind of text-based installer, I don't know. Uh, maybe it does have some more advanced functionality. But, you know, if you actually want to make your Linux distro popular, if you want to present it to the masses, a graphical installer like the Calamares installer or the Ubiquity installer would be much more appropriate than a uh, terminal-based or text-based installer. But anyway, I'm going to quickly go through the install here. All right, so I'm going to prepare the system, set virtual console, set keyboard layout. Let's see, keyboard layout. We definitely need to set that. And choose a US keyboard. Partition disk. Here, I guess we have to do our manual partitioning. Do we want to do some automatic partitioning? Now, let's see if it'll actually do an automatic partitioning. It's going to create a 512 megabyte, 512 megabyte swap. Okay, that's fine. Okay, here's the partition scheme that it's going to do when I choose automatic partitioning. Now, I had a 15 gig drive on this virtual machine, so it's going to do a 512 meg swap. 14 and a half gig rest of the partition. All right. We don't want to do the Lux encryption. I don't need logical volume management. Mount partitions. Oh, we really don't need to mount any of that back. Let's see. Install Arch Labs. Partitions must be mounted first. So let's go back to prepare system. Mount partitions. Oh, that was the uh, swap partition. That's not the one that we need to mount. We're going to make our partition an extended for partition. So we're going to use that file system. All right, for extended for, no A time is recommended. Okay, so we go down here. I'm going to hit the space bar next to no A time. And hit OK. Confirm the following mount options. And hit yes. Mount successful. 
Okay. I think we're good here. Let's see if we can install Arch Labs now. Yeah. Unpack and install Arch Labs. This is unpacking the system. Uh, yeah, this uh, console based installer. I've used a million of these kind of installers, you know, for minimal installers for various distros, server installs, and then some of your more Linux enthusiast distros love using these sort of installers. But really, Arch Labs is a very kind of user friendly distro out of the box when you get it installed. I mean, it presents a very nice open box desktop that I think pretty much anybody would feel comfortable using. So there's kind of a disconnect when you put a installer like this one in a distro like Arch Labs. I really think they should have probably stayed with the Calamares installer. I think they are doing themselves a disservice by using a console based install. All right, it is finished unpacking the system. So now I'm going to choose run mk init cpio. And we'll let this run for a minute. All right, the next step is generate the FS tab. Just going to hit OK. All right, the FS tab, which stands for File System Table, sets what storage devices and partitions are to be mounted and how they are to be used. UUID is recommended. OK. Since they recommend UUID, I guess I'll go with that. Next step in the installation, install grub. This is a very important step. Uh, you really want to install a bootloader. Okay, it says please wait. This may take a minute. No. I wonder if it actually installed grub. I really didn't see anything other than please wait. Let me go back there and make sure I did that right. Okay, slash dev slash SDA is the only place it could possibly install it to. I'm going to run it again. But that's weird. I don't get more information uh, spit out onto the screen other than please wait. I, I guess it installed Grub. I don't know. Anyway, then we click to go back. Configuration. Set system host name. Arch Labs has been chosen for us by default. I'm cool with that. System locale. Let's see. We need to... Uh, I think I need to choose English US here in this list. Very long list here. Yeah, English US. Let's see if I can highlight it with the keyboard. No, I just need to click OK on it. Oh. Set time zone and clock. So America, central time zone in America. I know Chicago is always in these lists. I click on Chicago. That's in the central time zone. All right. UTC is universal time standard and it's recommend, recommended unless dual booting with Windows. I'm going to choose UTC since they recommend it. Now we need to set our root password. I'm going to create a very easy root password. Create our user. So enter the username. Oh, I didn't realize the caps lock was on. That's going to cause me some problems with that root password. I wonder if it'll let me go back and set the root password again now that I realized the caps lock was on. Hmm. I think I did that correctly. System tweaks. It says these are optional. Let's see what they are. Amend journal D logging. Disable core dump logging. Restrict access to kernel logs. Yeah. I'm not going to do any of that. I'm just going to click done. Close the installer. Sure, why not? So, is the install done or not? Hmm. I guess I need to uh, eject the ISO, you know, eject the disk, reboot the machine, and see what happens. All right, so I rebooted, rebooted the machine, and this is our freshly installed Arch Labs Linux. So, it looks like the installation did complete correctly. 
It's like Grub installed correctly. I was a little concerned about that since I really didn't get enough uh, information on, on the screen to see what was going on with the Grub install. All right, and this is Arch Labs 2018.02. And of course, we are presented with the AL Hello program, the Arch Labs Hello program. This is that post installation script that uh, I was mentioning earlier. Uh, would you like to update the system and mirror list? Yes. Uh, we have to give our root password. All right. Now, mirror list is optimized for fastest fastest mirrors. You can refresh the mirror list anytime with the alias mirrors. Press enter. Refreshing the mirror list can take some time, so I'm going to pause the video. All right. So it updated the mirror list. The next step here is choose additional window managers slash desktop environments. I'm going to actually choose yes, even though I only plan on reviewing the open box window manager here today. I'm curious what else they offer. I know they offer i3. Yeah, they offer awesome BSPWM, i3 gaps, XFCE4, and zero none, meaning don't install anything else. I'm actually going to choose zero because I don't want to waste time installing something I'm not going to review, but that's great that they offer awesome BSPWM i3 and the XFCE desktop environment. Select from categories of applications. Sure, why not? Uh, web browsers in particular is an important one. So I'm guessing Firefox is the default. We could go ahead and install Chrome, Chromium, Opera, or the Qt browser. I like Firefox, so I'm just going to choose zero there. Install the Flash plugin, yes. All right, do I? Is there anything else I really need to install? We can install Steam here from this menu. I'm just going to click zero here. All right. Looks like it's running an update here. I'm going to pause the recording. All right, in this uh, post installation script, the AL Hello post installation script has completed. Press any key to reboot. And rebooting our machine again. And now, this is Arch Labs Linux. Again, this is just the standard, their open box desktop here. This is, this panel at the top is Polybar. Polybar is a neat little bar, a neat little panel. The one thing I, I don't like about it is I don't think that it does any kind of like task bar. Like if I open a window, say if I open a terminal here, this is the termite terminal. You know, it doesn't appear anywhere on this bar for me to minimize and unminimize minimize the window you know like a normal panel like the tent 2 panel or LX panel or any kind of dock you know usually you can click on an icon and you know mi minimize unminimize your windows uh, this panel here uh, really seems to be geared toward more tiling window managers something like awesome or i3 uh, where you don't really need a taskbar but anyway uh, this is the termite terminal while I have it open, we might as well check the kernel. 4.15.5, very recent kernel. Now for a menu system, of course, being open box, you have your right click menu system here in open box. On polybar here, they also have a menu system here, which is interesting. It's a neat little menu system here too, but I think it's confusing to have a menu here, one kind of menu here, and then the right click open box menu. Uh, I think they would be better to make this launcher simply launch the open box right click menu. That way there's some consistency there. You don't have uh, two different menus with programs in two different places. And But that's a, a minor gripe. That's just something I, I personally would, would do if I was the creator of this distro. Anyway, the right click menu, the open box right click menu, we have the terminal. The termite terminal is our default terminal. We have our file manager. It looks like we have the Thunar file manager, the standard file manager in the XFCE desktop environment. Thunar is a great file manager. Also under file manager, we had file roller. This is our archive manager for zip, unzip. 
Also, we have our web browser. Firefox is the default web browser. Now, in the AL Hello script, we could have chosen to install Chrome, Chromium, Opera. I really like their default home page here. Uh, if I click over official here or just hover over it, you get the official Arch Lab site, Arch Lab uh, GitHub, Reddit, Arch Lab forums, Arch Lab Twitter. If I click or uh, hover over the open box tab here, we get links to the box look website for open box themes. We get a open box guide. We get the Bunsen Labs open box scripts. So this is probably like their GitHub repo. Of course, we have a tab for wiki. We have the open box wiki. We have the arch wiki. We have get arch labs for the official download. This version of Firefox is 58.0.2. This is Firefox Quantum. All right, our text editor is Genie. Now they mentioned in their release notes that they had done some tweaking to the theme of Genie. And it looks really nice, actually. It looks really sharp. Uh, Genie is a nice, plain text editor. It's really an IDE. It's really designed for uh, programmers. Uh, Genie is a fast and lightweight IDE. Reading there about here. Let's see. Genie 1.32 is the version number. All right, for Office programs, we have a Calculator. It's the only Office program, so no LibreOffice suite or anything. But in that post-installation script, I'm sure we could have chosen to install the LibreOffice suite. Multimedia, by default, Audacious and MPV are installed. Audacious is our audio player. Really nice, lightweight, minimal audio player. And of course, MPV is your standard movie player. And there were... A lot more multimedia applications we could have installed in the AL Hello script. Under graphics, all we have is an image viewer, uh, but I'm sure, again, in the AL Hello post installation script, we probably could have installed GIMP, Inkscape, Blender, those sorts of programs. Under accessories, mail. We do not have any mail client, but we can get one if we need it. Messaging, same thing. There is no instant messenger client. File sharing, the same thing. There's no file sharing programs installed by default. And then we have a screenshot submenu here. And we have the options of screenshot now, where when I click this, it instantly takes a screenshot of the screen. Screenshot in five seconds. That's useful. That way, when I click this button, I can get out of the menu if I don't want to include the open box menu, you know, in my screenshot. That way you can you have five seconds to get your screen set exactly the way you want it. We also have screenshot in 10 seconds if you need it even longer than that. And screenshot with selection. We have a places menu. This is a, an open box pipe menu here. Uh, basically, it lists various places within your directory structure. And then when you find the directory that you want to go to, just click browse here and it should open the Thunar file manager in that directory. Yeah, this is my documents directory. All right, we also have a preferences category here. Open box is one of the sub menus. We have open box settings. We have our menu GUI, keybind GUI, auto start GUI. So this is where you would do all your open box configurations. This is where uh, you would add or remove things from the open box menu here. The keybind GUI sets all your key bindings for the open box window manager. And of course, auto start what programs launch on startup when you first log into open box. And then the various config files that are needed. Uh, edit your menu.xml, edit your rc.xml, and edit your auto start file. Uh, compositing, we're using the Compton compositor, and there's some uh, preferences for that. Polybar, again, Polybar is the panel at the top of the screen. We have options to restart the Polybar, Polybar GUI, stop bars, and edit the configs. Let's see what the Polybar GUI is. Okay. Let's see. You have the options of setting a open box bar, i3 bar, or BSPWM bar. So I guess they've got three different layouts depending on what window manager you, you're using. Uh, layout that's more appropriate for open box, and one that's more appropriate for i3, and one that's more appropriate for BSPWM. All right, also under preferences, we have Conky. We have a Conky chooser. I don't see any Conky on the desktop. Let's see if we can add one. Yes, we can. Here's our conky. 
gives us some system information and it also gives us our key bindings, our shortcut keys. For example, the super key and T should give us a terminal, and it does. Um, super key and E should give us our text editor, which is Genie, and it does. Let me close these. We also have key bindings to launch the file manager, the music player, or the web browser. <clears throat> our audio control, I'm assuming that's Pulse Audio's volume control. And we also have a key binding super key plus X that logs us out of the open box window manager. So that's cool that they include that conky there. They probably need to go ahead and have that launch though out of the box by default. So uh, we know what the key bindings are. Also under preferences we have tent 2 settings. Now tent 2 is a different panel. They're using the polybar panel. Tent 2 is a different minimal lightweight panel. I actually really love the Tent2 panel. If I was going to live in i3, I probably would install and run Tent2 rather than Polybar. Uh, if I'm going to run OpenBox, that is, because I really like having a proper taskbar, you know, that you can click on and minimize and unminimize windows. <clears throat> uh, so we do have various Tent2 themes here. So what we would probably need to do is go edit our open box auto start file and no longer have polybar auto start and have tent 2 auto start instead all right right clicking on the menus here we have a under preferences we have settings for a sub menu we have panel chooser oh well we were just talking about panels yeah what panel do we want to do polybar or tent 2 i'm going to choose setup tent 2 i'm going to click okay ah and now we have the tent 2 panel very cool. So that solves that problem. Uh, now, when I open a window, you see I have an icon for this window. I click on it and it should minimize it. When I click on it again, it unminimizes. Yes, that, that's something I, I would really want if I'm running a floating, aka a stacking uh, window manager. For a tiling window manager, polybar is appropriate because you're not going to be clicking on the panel to minimize and unminimize because in a tiling window manager, you don't need to do anything like that. Your windows are pretty much always on the screen. But for open box, I think tent to is a more appropriate panel. All right, under preferences and settings, we have some other options. Uh, one that I definitely want to check out is the wallpapers. This opens the nitrogen wallpaper utility. Let's see what wallpapers we have installed here by default. So the default wallpaper is this one here. It's called Arch Labs. Okay, very simple. We have some other Arch Labs wallpapers here. And yeah, that one's pretty cool. Similar theme. Yep, Arch Labs Minimo. And we have one called Blue. We have some nature stuff. Here is Crimson. Ooh, that is very crimson. That's like a blood red kind of background. For nature photos we have forest. We have forest outline. Leaves. This one here looks interesting. Volcano. Let me check that out. Yeah, I really like that. You know what? I think that kind of fits with the grayish, bluish themes going on with Arch Labs. I'm just going to leave that set. Yeah, I'm getting this uh, Arch Labs put together pretty nicely, uh, exactly how I want. I'm going to go back to the Tent 2 settings here, because I don't like the panel at the top. I want the panel at the bottom of the screen, so here's our default Tent 2 theme. It even gives you a preview of what the panel looks like, so this very first one that's highlighted is, is the one that's running. So if I right-click on it, I can choose Edit Theme. Then one of the options here is panel. And then if I choose position, if I choose the bottom here and hit apply, yes, now I've got the panel at the bottom. You guys see the panel here at the bottom now? We open up a file manager. See, now I can. Mm hmm. Like it. Also, under preferences and settings, we have uh, our Rofi theme. What is Rofi? Rofi is a. Uh, a launcher, a run launcher. It looks like, according to the conky here, they have our launcher set to just the super key. So 
the super key by itself should launch the Rofi launcher and it does and then you just begin typing whatever it is you want to launch say I want to launch genie I just start typing G E A. And once I get to where I'm going I just hit enter genie launches you don't have to type the entire name of the program either genie is smart enough or man Rofi is smart enough like I've typed Genie before. The next time I start typing G, it's already guessing I'm looking for Genie. G E. If I just hit enter now, Genie is going to launch. So Rofi is a great run launcher. Also under preferences, settings, we have our settings manager. This should be like our control panel. Yeah. Standard settings manager for appearance, file manager settings, preferred applications, display keyboard and mouse, the usual suspects. Back to preferences and settings, we have LX appearance. Um, for theming, let's see, I'm going to open up a file manager. We're going to play around with the theming just a little bit. By default, our theme is Arch Labs Dark. They also offer a Arch Labs Light theme. So if I can apply that, it, doesn't, it didn't change this window. Let's see if I close it and open a new one. It's still not changing. I may have to log out and log back in to get that to take. Anyway, I'm going to just go back to the dark, hit apply. The only other themes that are worth mention mentioning are the Edwaita themes, the standard Edwaita theme and the Edwaita dark theme. Icon themes, you really don't have anything. You have the standard Edwaita icon theme too, which is not a very attractive icon set. Then you have Arch Labs Dark and Arch Labs Light. So I'm just going to stick with the defaults. Back to the right click menu, we have help information. We have this little right click menu system for various help and support. We have our key bindings menu here. We have our lock screen, and then we have the option to exit open box. This logs us out of open box and takes us back into our login manager. All in all, what do I think about Arch Labs 2018.02? I love it. I really loved Arch Labs when I reviewed it uh, about four months ago. It's Arch based. It has a very minimal open box install. Not a lot installed on it, but that post installation script is great. You can uh, run through that and if you want things like LibreOffice and GIMP and you know Chrome and all that installed on this system, you just tell it in that script, you just run through that, you get all the software you want installed out of the box. Uh, it's a very attractive looking open box setup too. Uh, I love a lot of the pipe menus that they have in the right click menu here, uh, such as this places pipe menu. I also love some of the, the uh, like tent 2 stuff here. It was very easy to configure this tent 2 panel. I'm sure the polybar panel also has very similar functionality to it. Uh, the only thing, the only negative I will say about this particular version of Arch Labs compared to the previous one that I reviewed, I do not like the text-based installer. I mean, I don't mind it. I had no trouble running through it. It was fairly quick and straightforward, but I really think they are not doing themselves, uh, they're doing themselves a disservice really by not using a graphical installer like the Calamaris installer. They were already using the Calamaris installer anyway in their previous versions. I don't know why they made the switch. I don't know if it was really that necessary for them to change to this uh, Arch Labs installer is what they were calling it. I'm not exactly sure if it's their, their own custom installer or, or what the deal with that is, but I think they probably should have stuck with the Calamaris installer. I think it's a lot a lot better for newer Linux users. L newer Linux users would struggle with that text-based installer that I went through. But anyway, overall, I give Arch Labs 2018.02 NA. Check it out, guys. Peace.